Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna look at another example of evaluating an indefinite integral using trigonometric substitution. So here we're interested in finding the antiderivative of the function one over the quantity x squared multiplied by the square root of x squared plus four. So after we've decided that we wanna use a trigonometric substitution to uh, try to evaluate this integral, the next step is deciding which type of trig sub do we wanna use. And to help us make that decision, it all comes down to what sort of quantities are showing up in our integral or in our integrand. And here we can observe that we have the square root of x squared plus some constant, in this case four. And if we look at kind of those general forms we're looking for to help us decide which trig substitution to make, we see our second one most closely resembles what we are working with. So our second one is the square root of a squared plus x squared. And that'll tell us that we wanna make a tangent substitution. So before we start making our substitution, we have to decide what is our a value going to be in our substitution. Sometimes we have to do things like factoring before we can identify our a value, but in this case, we have everything set up relatively nicely. We can see that we have our x squared and that's gonna make our a squared equal to four. So a will be equal to just two. So our substitution here is we're gonna let x be equal to two times tangent of theta and our differential of x will be two times secant squared of theta d theta. All right, so let's go ahead and start implementing our substitutions. In the numerator, we can swap out our differential of x in terms of our differential of theta. That's gonna be given by two secant squared of theta and d theta. And then in our denominator, our first factor is x squared. That's gonna be the quantity two times tangent all squared. So that'll be two squared, which is four, times tangent squared of theta. And then also in our denominator, we have our square root quantity that motivated this trig substitution. So what's gonna happen to x squared? Well, just like in front of our square root, that's gonna turn into a four times tangent squared of theta. And we're still gonna have to add four to that. So our next steps are going to involve rewriting and simplifying the integrand. And a big part of that work is eliminating this square root quantity, the square root of four tangent squared plus four. And the way we're gonna do that is by using our Pythagorean identity. We're gonna start with tangent squared of theta plus one is equal to secant squared of theta. And then recognize, well, we need a factor of four to make any progress here. So we know four times tangent squared of theta plus four will be equal to four times secant squared of theta. So now if we take the square root of the left-hand side, that'll be equal to the square root of the right-hand side, and we can simplify that square root. The square root of four times secant squared of theta is gonna be two times secant of theta. All right, so just going from our second line to our third line, I've made our substitution using our Pythagorean identity. All of our side work over here just told us that the square root of four times tangent squared of theta plus four simplifies to two times secant of theta. And so now we can do some more simplifications. Those factors of two in the numerator and the denominator cancel each other out. And we can also cancel one of these factors of secant of theta out. And so at this point, uh, I have secant of theta over four times tangent squared of theta. I'll go ahead and pull out that factor of one fourth entirely out of the integral to make things a little bit easier to work with. And now inside of our integral, we just have secant of theta divided by tangent squared of theta. And so now our integral isn't quite in that form that we'd like it to be for powers of secant and tangent squared. So our next step is gonna to be to rewrite everything in terms of our most basic trig functions, sine and cosine. So remember, secant of theta is the same as one over cosine of theta, but dividing by tangent squared is the same as multiplying by cotangent squared, and we could rewrite that as cosine squared of theta over sine squared of theta. So this one over cosine of theta is just that rewritten form of secant of theta in our numerator, and the one over tangent squared or cotangent squared is where our cosine squared divided by sine squared comes from. So after rewriting secant and tangent in terms of our sine and cosine functions, we see that we can cancel out one of our factors of cosine 
and now our integral has whittled down to just one fourth times the integral of cosine of theta divided by sine squared of theta. And now to make further progress on this integral, we're going to have to make a u substitution. And so we have that kind of odd power of cosine showing up here. So we're going to want to set u equal to sine of theta. Then that would cause du to become cosine of theta d theta. Well, making these u substitutions will allow us to rewrite our integral equivalently as one fourth times the integral, well, cosine of theta times d theta in the numerator, turns into the differential of u, and then in the denominator, we have sine squared, that turns into one over u squared. Well, we're finally at a spot where we can find the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of this function is gonna be, remember this is the same as u to the power of negative two. So we have to use the power rule, increase that exponent by one, that gives us a new exponent of negative one, and then divide by that new exponent. So that'll give us negative u to the negative one, which we could also rewrite as negative one over u. We of course can't forget our plus c, our constant of integration here. So just rewriting this a little bit nicer, we get negative one over four u, plus c as our antiderivative, or at least our antiderivative in terms of u. But we don't want to stop here because our original question wasn't asked in terms of this variable u, it was working with the variable of x. So now we have to go back to that original variable x, and the path we'll take to get there is to first go from u to theta, and then from theta back to x. Well, going from u to theta is pretty straightforward. We know that u is equal to sine of theta, so our antiderivative here is just going to be negative 1 over 4 times sine of theta plus some constant c. Now our final step of back substitution is going to be a little bit trickier because now we have to go from our second variable of theta back to our original variable of x. And the way we do that is we use that translation or substituting equation that says x is equal to 2 times tangent of theta. Just like in our earlier example, the way we can use this to help us go from theta back to x is by using some right triangle trigonometry. So if we solve this uh, little equation for tangent of theta by dividing both sides by two, it tells us that tangent of theta is equal to x over two. That allows us to create a little right triangle for our situation. So here is our angle of theta inside of our right triangle. And what we remember from right triangle trig and SOHCAHTOA is that tangent is that ratio of the opposite side length to our angle to the adjacent side length to our angle. So in this right triangle, if our opposite side length was of length x and our adjacent side length was of length two, then we would get the desired tangent ratio opposite over adjacent. Tangent of theta is equal to x over two. And then we could use the Pythagorean theorem to help us find our hypotenuse. It's going to be the square root of x squared plus 4. And notice that square root of x squared plus 4 shows up in our original integral. That's always a good way of checking to make sure you're doing your little right triangle trig here correctly. And so now that we have our right triangle established, we can use that to help us find the relationship between this variable theta and our original variable of x. Remember, we have to figure out how to express sine of theta in terms of x. And we can do that again using SOHCAHTOA. Remember that sine is the opposite side length divided by the hypotenuse. So here's our angle theta. The opposite side length is x. And our hypotenuse we found to be the square root of x squared plus 4. So now we are ready to finish our problem off. Our answer in terms of theta was negative 1 over 4 times sine of theta plus c. Well, Dividing by sine of theta is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of this fraction. So this is going to be equal to negative the square root of x squared plus 4 over 4x plus some constant c. Right here we have our negative 1 fourth. This is the reciprocal of sine of theta, and we still need our constant of integration. In this example, we're going to look at Another problem where we have to use trigonometric substitution to help us evaluate an indefinite integral. In this example, we are interested in finding the antiderivative 
of the function x, which is multiplied by the square root of x squared minus 9. So next we have to decide, do we want to make a sine, tangent, or secant substitution to help us evaluate this integral? And because we have x squared minus 9, a variable minus a constant, we want to use a secant substitution. Right? We can see we basically have the setup that we want without any further manipulation needed. So next we have to identify our a value. 9 is a squared, so a will be equal to 3. So for this problem, we want to make a secant substitution. We're going to set x equal to 3 times secant of theta, and that'll cause the differential of x to be 3 times secant of theta times tangent of theta d theta. All right, so let's go ahead and get the ball rolling. So that factor of x in front of our square root is going to turn into the quantity 3 times secant of theta. Underneath our square root, we have x squared minus 9. If x is equal to 3 times secant of theta, then if we square that, we're going to get 9 times secant squared of theta for x squared. We still have to subtract 9 away from that, and we still have to multiply our square root and the entire integrand by the differential of x. But now we have to replace the differential of x and express it in terms of our differential of theta. So our earlier work told us that dx is going to be equal to 3 times secant of theta times tangent of theta times d theta. So after these initial trig substitutions, we're going to have to simplify and rewrite our integrand, all these quantities. And to help us do that, or at least for the piece underneath our square root, we're going to have to use one of our Pythagorean identities. Here we're going to have to use the one that says secant squared of theta minus 1 is equal to tangent squared of theta, but everything is multiplied by 9. So really, we're using that manipulated version of it that says 9 times secant squared of theta minus 9 is equal to 9 times tangent squared of theta. But like in our other examples, we're going to manipulate this even further because we have the square root of 9 minus secant squared of theta minus 9. That would be equal to the square root of the right-hand side, which simplifies in such a way that now there are no square roots involved, right? That's going to simplify to 3 times tangent of theta. And now we're ready to combine all these trig functions together. So we have 1, 2, 3 factors of 3 being multiplied together. That'll give us a factor of 27 when combined. Then I'm going to pull that factor of 27 outside of the integral. Then we have two factors of secant multiplied together. So that'll give us secant squared of theta, as well as two factors of tangent multiplied together. And that'll give us tangent squared of theta. And now that we have our integral rewritten, we have these nice powers of secant squared and tangent squared as our integrand. And so we can just make a u substitution to make a little bit more progress in this problem. And so the u substitution we want to make here to have things work out nicely is we're going to set u equal to tangent of theta. That way, the differential of u will become secant squared of theta d theta, and we'll be able to write that factor of secant squared and d theta in terms of the differential of our third variable, u. So making these substitutions, we can't forget about that factor of 27 out front. Make sure to include that. And then secant squared and d theta turn into our differential of u. I'll just leave that at the end. And our remaining piece, which is tangent squared, is just going to turn into u squared. Well, now we can find this antiderivative pretty quickly just using our power rule. Increase the exponent by 1, get an exponent of 3, and then divide by that new exponent. And when we're dividing by 3, we can divide that 27 out front by our 3. And so that'll end up giving us our antiderivative as 9u cubed plus c. But this is not our final answer. Our final answer has to be expressed in terms of that original variable, which was x. So to get back to x, first we have to take the path where we go from u to theta, and then from theta back to x. So remember, this whole time u was equal to tangent of theta. So we can write 9u cubed plus c as 9 times tangent cubed of theta plus c. And then to go from theta back to x, we have to use our original substituting equation and some right triangle trigonometry. Right? We know 
that x is equal to 3 times secant of theta. So that means secant of theta is the same as x over 3. And that'll help us set up a right triangle to represent our little equation there. We know secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So secant is the reciprocal of that. It's hypotenuse over adjacent. So we can think of x over 3 as that ratio of the hypotenuse of our right triangle divided by its adjacent side length, the adjacent side to our angle theta that is. And now we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the remaining side length of our triangle. And it's going to be the square root of x squared minus 9, which is no surprise because that's the quantity that was showing up in our original integral. Remember, the whole point of creating this little right triangle is to help us figure out how to go from our intermediate variable of theta, and in particular tangent of theta, back to our original variable of x. Well, now that we have all three sides of our right triangle established, we can find our tangent ratio. Tangent is the opposite side length of our angle, divided by the adjacent side length to our angle. That's going to give us the square root of x squared minus 9 all over 3. So now to finish this problem off, we just have to plug that into our antiderivative that we have at the moment in terms of theta. So we'll get 9 times tangent cubed of theta. We have to be careful because when we cube this, we have to cube the square root as well as the denominator of 3. So to make it easier to write, let's go ahead and think of that square root as being an exponent of 1 half. Then if we cube it, we'll end up with an exponent of 3 halves. When we cube our denominator, we get 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. And we'll be able to simplify, cancel out some of those common factors of 9. And our final answer should look like x squared minus 9, that quantity raised to the power of 3 halves, all over 3 plus some constant c. So I don't think this example was as uh, time consuming or involved as some of our previous examples were, but this example still was a lot more work than we needed to do. All right, we decided right away that we're going to make a trig substitution, then we had to write everything in terms of this new angle variable theta. To evaluate that integral, we had to do a u substitution. We found our antiderivative in terms of u, then we had to go back to theta, make a right triangle to then go from theta back to x, then we finally got our answer. But there's actually a much, much easier way to evaluate this integral, and that's uh, recognizing that a trig substitution is actually kind of overkill. It's not the appropriate method to use here. The actual best way to evaluate this integral is just using a u substitution, right? Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's leave our final answer up on the board, but erase all of our work. Remember how long it took us to reach this answer. If we use a u substitution, we should get the exact same answer in much less time. All right, so now we're going to tackle this integral much quicker using a u substitution. And our choice for u is just going to be that quantity underneath our square root, x squared minus 9. And so now if we figure out that relationship between the differential of u and the differential of x by differentiating our substituting equation, we find that the differential of u is just going to be 2x dx. Because our differential of u has a factor of x and dx attached to it, this is what's going to make a u substitution effective for this example. We know x times the differential of x is going to be equal to 1 half times the differential of u. And then the square root of x squared minus 9 is just going to turn into the square root of u, or u to the power of 1 half. Well, now we can find our antiderivative just using the power rule. Increase that exponent by 1 to get u to the 3 halves and then divide by that new exponent of 3 halves. Dividing by 3 halves is equivalent to multiplying by its reciprocal of 2 thirds. So we can multiply that fraction out front 1 half by this 2 thirds, and that'll simplify to just 1 third. We can't forget our constant of integration. So now we've already arrived at our antiderivative, and now we only have to back substitute one time to get our antiderivative in terms of our original variable x. We know that u is equal to x squared minus 9, so this becomes 1 third times the quantity x squared minus 9 to the 3 halves plus some arbitrary constant. That's what we got when we did it using trig substitution. 
So always watch out for easier techniques to evaluate these integrals. Just because you can use trig substitution doesn't mean you should.